When I started this project a few months ago, I didn't know what was about to happen. Well, I present this video in honor of a man who really inspired me. His name is Ruben Rowan. He was known as the Electron Teacher on YouTube. Unfortunately, and I'm sad to say that when I called to thank him again for a soldering station gift, I was shocked to find out from his wife that he had passed away. He had a heart attack and was gone just like that. Well, Ruben was quite an ingenious guy, and if you remember, he was also the person who invented and sent Jeff and I the robots which we raised. I so much wanted to thank him again in person for his Weller soldering station gift he sent me, because I use it almost every day, and I just wanted to tell him. So, Ruben, I hope you get to see this video in heaven. Thanks, buddy. So, let's build a science fair project in his honor. I call it an analog random number generator. This is a unique dice replacement system. Since the numbers go to 12, it's faster to play dice games like Parcheesi or Monopoly. It can also be used to randomly pick orders by numbers and many other uses. The parts you'll need are one or two switches. I show both of them here, a toggle and push button, a cheap clock, I used a $5 clock from the drugstore, a variable resistor set to 10 or 15 ohms, a soldering iron, and some wire. You also need a couple of AA batteries and a toy electric motor. I used a mini storm launcher motor for mine. Before assembling, remove the hands and the clock assembly from the clock. The second hand is going to be the pointer. I put the hour and a minute hand on the outside of the bezel to use as guides and pointers for the games. I use a silicone hose for the nut, that way I can maintain some tension on the hands out front. Now glue your motor in and assemble the switches, the batteries, and the rheostat as shown. Make sure to pick a motor with a shaft long enough to reach through so you can attach a second hand. I used a mini storm launcher motor. First I'll show you the schematic and what we're going to do. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to take your two batteries and connect them together in parallel. That means they're both hooked together. So you solder, you do this very easily, solder the uh, pluses together and the minus together. After you do that, you run one minus wire to one side of the motor. These two batteries will last a long time. Of course, you can have a battery box that holds two cells in parallel. You could put in rechargeable batteries. All that could be used too. The next thing we want to do is connect the switches up. So we need to tap off of the positive side of these batteries and bring wires to each switch. So you would take one and come down here and connect to one side of the push button switch. You would take another wire, come over here and connect it to one terminal of the single pole switch. The next thing we do is we connect the other side of the single pole switch to the center terminal of your variable resistor. So we take a wire there, we bring this over here, and we solder that to the center terminal of that variable resistor here. Same thing with the push button switch. Take the other side of the terminal, we bring it up, and we connect it. Should look like this. Okay, the next step is to install a resistor or variable resistor. You know, you need the resistor or the motor may spin too fast. Here's how it works. When we push the switch, these two wires connect, the plus goes through the variable resistor, adjusting the speed of the motor up to the motor. The other side of the motor, of course, is grounded. Same thing with the, with the toggle switch. You throw this switch, it applies power through the circuit, through the switch to the variable resistor and to the motor. Okay, that's how it looks on paper. Here's how it went for me with the pictures of the assembly to help you see the project up close. When you're done, the back side should look like this or something close. Okay, let's test it before putting on the bezel and the marker hands. I put some fluorescent material on mine for the black light and you just want to make sure that the hand's not rubbing anything anywhere. I have two switches, one to leave it running and one for push button. Dealer's choice. 
That works pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and put on some optional words and instructions on the face and then put on the bezel. There's just a few ways that you can use it as a dice eliminator. So let's say I want to set the uh, the counter to uh, you're playing a game and the numbers only between one and six are used. So I put the small hand on the one and I put the big hand on the six. And now when you press the button, uh, any number that it stops in, in that range will be your answer. And here we go, number two. Or you can leave the switch on and let it run. Let's say you want to pick a number. Random guessing game. Say, well, I want to pick number 10. Okay, I'm going to put it to number 10. That's where it has to land, on number 10. So I run it and close. Next person closest to 10 will be the next player. Push the button again, and that would be number two, and number three. Okay, folks, there you go. There's an idea for a science fair project. Hope you enjoy it. Here's a few more assembly pictures and pictures to help you along.